Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, December 15th of 2018. It's uh, almost 8 p.m. here in Fort Worth. Um, the last couple of days I've been trying to upload a video, a couple videos, and I... Uh, ran into problems I'm lazy <clears throat> usually I just record the video and then upload it uh, the videos the last couple of days I trying to do a little bit better splice together some material into the video editor and then uploaded it and the Upload would go, 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 and then, of course, I wouldn't be paying attention because it would take a long time. And I'd look back, and the upload had been cleared. You know, usually it's uploading and then it's processing or whatever. It would be uh, cleared. There wouldn't be anything there. I'd go over to my YouTube site, and I'd see that the thing was running where something was, but it would never get, get there. So <clears throat> I had that problem a while back. I think it must be some type of code that when I, you know, you should be when you're using a video editor, you should be able to pull over, you know, you should have files in different places that you could pull over, audio, all different kinds of things, and uh, then everything would work together, you know, you could put a title on it and do all that kind of stuff. For some reason, I think there must be with this editor, must put some type of a code in there, and that code must trigger something to shut down the upload or something. To, so, I don't know. But, God, I hate that when, um, when I put the extra effort in to try to uh, do something. I, <clears throat> I have the... three of the files of course there are two. I'm not going to let me show you though I'm not going to embed them I'm just going to show show them to you here on the screen uh, let's see here is a little bit of whoops okay uh, I'm using uh, cam link for the camera. That is my Panasonic G7 camera. I cannot get it to link with the app. I just didn't want to spend a whole bunch of time. The app is on the Panasonic app, and I did have it work in the past. Just can't get it to link right now. I don't want to mess with it. So, like I said, this is so, manually, I would have to adjust. I think that's focus. I think back here there's a zoom, but not much of a zoom. Oh, God. Too close. That's a, uh, that's a good lens for this. But if I want to uh, zoom out or something, I need to... Use the clippers on my head again. Uh, let's see. I think the tracking is not. Is the tracking showing up? Actually, showing up on my. I think it might be. Anyway, I pulled the cam link device off. It just wasn't working well with, you know, it just wasn't working well. I'm sure if I would put a bunch of effort into it. So let me just delete, go ahead and delete this file. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, the next one's over here. Let's bring it over here. Okay, 
Testing one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Screen looks clear. Well, except for the sound bar. Except I think the I think that's a bad place for the camera. Okay, let's check this out. What are we going to check out, Jim? Oh, okay. Let's see, that was cam link two. Trash! Let's bring cam link three over here. Okay, testing one, two, three, four, five. That's with 10 milliseconds offset. Okay, this is going to be with 20 seconds offset. By the way, tell me what you think is best. This is going to be with 30 seconds metal, uh, offset, 30 milliseconds. Can we go back to 10 metal seconds? That's what I have it set at now, by the okay, way. We're back with 10 metal seconds. Okay, end of clip. Okay, trash. So, I've given up on, I think, well, not on using the cam link with the uh, Panasonic G7. But I do, I am going to try to do some, um, hang on a second. Don't touch that mouse. This is my, uh, whoops. This is my Panasonic G7. It was my dream camera that I finally, you know, purchased a while back. And I really haven't done very much uh, with it. But hooking it into my PC and using it, it just doesn't, just not made, it's not working out. Um... Trying to remember to <laughs> make something full screen when I, but I do want to start using this to make some make some videos. The uh, lens that you usually when you buy this, you know, with the lens, it's just a, a forty-five. Okay. I... Oh, terrible to get old. It's a... Okay. 45. Nope. It says a SPH. It's the 46, I believe. And it's a very little zoom, 46 to, I don't know. I need, it'd be about $150. I need to, this is fine by, you know, setting this on a tripod and using it to uh, do what I'm doing now. That's just fine. But I do need to, uh, and I, when I, that uses interchangeable lenses. My other two cameras, Panasonic's don't. 
before I bought that, if you remember watching my videos, I said I've you know when I buy that I've got to decide that I'm not going to go out and be purchasing additional lenses. It's just a money pit. So, but I do want to start taking some pictures or some video with that. And it, of course, it does 4K. Um, I don't think my other, I can't remember now. I know the LX7 doesn't do 4K. And the, is that the FZ 200 or 300 that I have? Or I can't remember. I'm not sure if it does 4K. can't remember. Although, I don't see much point in having, you know, if you're going to be looking at something on YouTube, I can't see much point in it being 4K. I mean, unless I was at a botanical garden or, uh, you know, a beach or something like that. But I could be wrong. I was wrong once. Um... So, really sad about this uh, seven-year-old Guatemalan girl who died in the custody of uh, border service. Uh, they, you know, we shouldn't be you know, we need to have control of our borders, but we also I think in fact it's international law or whatever, that uh, nations are expected to allow immigrants to come to their, you know, not to come in, but to come, well, to come and if they are legitimate, and I forget what they, you know, if they're subject to persecution or being killed or whatever, that they should be you know, granted asylum, or at least a hearing or whatever. And, uh, but we shouldn't be just taking children away from their parents. And we shouldn't be, you know, we'd be, we should allow people to, sh to come to our borders without uh, making them into monsters or whatever. And if we take custody of anybody, you know, it's our responsibility to protect them and in this case, a seven-year-old girl should have been, a, you know, everybody. You know, even if you're 17 years old or 27 years old, when you're taken into custody, you know, it should be. Heck, if you watch uh, clips of news and police arrest and on YouTube or whatever, you see somebody, the guy may be a rapist and a multiple rapist and a multiple murderer. When the police get the handcuffs on him and they're putting him in the police car, you know, they put their hand on his head and they make sure that he, and they're putting him in the car that he doesn't, that he doesn't bump his head. You know, they should, you know, they're responsible. And they should, you know, should have, should examine all of them, that come in, are you okay medically, and everything else. So, that's a real tragedy. I saw the story the other day, and they just mentioned a seven-year-old girl. Today, they have her picture. It makes it, you know, makes it worse. Looks, you know, I mean, it makes you feel worse. I guess that shouldn't be too. That's the same with that we find, you know, that the news will say, you know, uh, twenty people drowned that were in a boat, you know, trying to get into some country in the world, they were refugees and 20 drowned. And, you know, you go, eh, 20 drowned. And then you see, like, the picture of the a little infant or whatever who, or a little boy who washed up on the beach. I think it might have been Italy. And then it, you know, really gets, it gets to you. That's just the way we are, human nature, I guess. Um, so, Obamacare, uh, what a, United States, here in the United States, people, you know, I, I'm 77 years old, I'll be 78 here in March, um, so the Democrats, Franklin D. Roosevelt or whatever, starting with Social Security, 
and then later Medicare was added. Of course, I and the rest of us, we all paid in. We paid for it. We paid for our retirement, and we paid for our medical care. The medical care kicks in at 65. Um, you know, every hour that I worked, I paid into the fund, and my employer paid into the fund. But... If you're not 65, you don't have health care in the United States, unless you happen to be working for a company who has health insurance. When I started out, of course, well, the companies I worked for had health insurance. But gradually, and, that, and gradually what they did, you know, when I started out, uh, health care you know, we, and we still paid a little bit. You know, you paid the company a little bit for the health care. But the companies and started out for the first 26 years of my life, I worked for, you know, unions. I, well, not for the union, but I mean, I worked for the company. But I was a union member. Uh, Boilermakers Union, uh, United Auto Workers. Uh, but then eventually, because of health care costs and stuff like that, it got where the where your you had to pay more for the insurance. Then it, you paid more for your you were paying more for your insurance, and then they were you know cutting the benefits. It used to be okay. Your prescriptions are you know no charge for your prescriptions, and uh, then they started charging like two dollars for a prescription or whatever. And uh, what was it? Then one hospital I was working at, they said, uh, you can get prescriptions, your prescriptions filled at the hospital at the cost that, uh, that the hospital pays for the, for the medication. And that was, of course, I wasn't, ever, I wasn't sick. And even when I, I got divorced about age 40, I continue to cover my children of course on my and they were healthy basically but uh, so I, I I never really had to buy any you know maybe I had the flu something whatever but, but at the hospital I, when you went to the pharmacy if you needed something when they got to that point it was you paid a lot of money for a prescription unless it was Tylenol and Tylenol was dirt cheap much cheaper because the hospital, I guess, bought it in, you know, gigantic trucks unloading it all the time. So Tylenol was cheap, but other other stuff wasn't. And then it got to where companies didn't have, you know, unions were, Republicans were pretty much crushed to unions. Uh, thank you, St. Reagan, for that. President Reagan for that, helping that to break the unions. And... Uh, then it got where uh, companies didn't even have, you know, insurance. Or, and one of uh, a lot of people, when Obamacare was passed, there were people saying, well, Obamacare is expensive. I could get, you know, I, I worked for, uh, people are saying, I worked for McDonald's and I had an insurance, you know, young kids. <clears throat> I worked for McDonald's. And I had an insurance policy, and I only paid, you know, twenty-five dollars a month for the thing. And uh, McDonald's paid some, and <clears throat> or I worked for Burger King or whatever, and I only paid fifty dollars a month. And <clears throat> those insurance plans were not worth anything. Total crap. <clears throat> you didn't really have health insurance. You just had a piece of paper that made you think that you had a health insurance plan. So. When Obamacare was uh, enacted, uh, yes, it cost more, but it was real insurance, and it is real insurance, although a federal judge just ruled that Obamacare is, uh, he struck it down, although it's still in effect because there'll be court cases and everything else, but, so... Um,
I uh, the outlaw Josie Wales. I saw her in that. She was really good in that. She just passed away. She had breast cancer, and I guess it turned into bone cancer. She died at age 74. Uh, I love the movie. That's one of my favorite movies, uh, The Outlaw Josie Wales, and she was in that. I'll put the link, but there again, let me remind you, if you go to Wikipedia and if you read this, it's going to tell you the entire story. Uh, so... If you want to see it, don't don't read about you know. Um, and of course, she was in every which way but loose. In fact, she married Clint Eastwood, and uh, was married to him for a few years. Uh, and she was also in Bronco Billy. And. Uh, course directed by Clint Eastwood and he was uh, he was in it uh, so I liked Bronco Billy and the outlaw Josie Wales a couple of my favorite movies and she was in the movies and she was good but um, Here's the outlaw, the trailer for Outlaw Josie Wales. Let's see if we get by without having a copyright strike or something here. But it's a trailer. They should allow that. Well, anyway. I should have pulled up the uh, Bronco Billy uh, trailer. Anyway, I didn't know until she passed away, and she passed away a, a few months ago or whatever. They just now announced it or whatever. But uh, I didn't know her life story, I and mean, I'm just going by her life story by, uh, you know, what Wikipedia talks about. Uh, so she had, uh, she had sort of a hard life. I liked those two movies and others, and I liked Any Which Way, but she was in, of course, that one also. Of course, she was married to Clint Eastwood from 1975 to 1989. But uh, in the movies, I liked the movies, but the kind of person she played, I, I just wanted somebody who was more aggressive, more... I didn't want a dominatrix, what do you call it? You know, I didn't want a woman with a whip and, you know, leather on or whatever, but I wanted somebody that was more, uh, I, uh, more normal. She always played these parts. Well, I, in her real life, I guess, uh, I guess that was kind of, uh, the first man she married, according to Wikipedia, uh, 
she was friends with him when they were kids, time she was 12 or time he was 12. They were, you know, playmates together or whatever. Well, she married him uh, in 1967, and she says that uh, they never consummated their marriage. He never had intercourse with her. And that he was uh, like a sister to her, like a girl, or maybe it's girlfriend, like a girlfriend. Or and then, of course, she ran in, and then she met Clint Eastwood, and uh, I think he was kind of an asshole. And uh, anyway, that story you can read here, but you can re you can read about her here if you want to. And she had, but uh, these are her credits. Now, 1968, uh, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, she was in that and uh, got Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Uh, no, nominated. Uh, nominated a Grove, anyway, I think she might have directed that, but uh, I didn't see, here's a footnote. She explains in her autobiographic, quote, before I had met Clint, my gynecologist had suggested and fitted me for an IUD. Because my sex life was not very active, he did not think I should be constantly taking birth control pills. Clint complained of the IUD. It was uncomfortable for him, he said, and he was, and he too was not in favor of birth control pills. So he suggested a special clinic at Cedars Hospital where they taught a <laughs> natural method of birth control. It was the same rhythm system that has historically been used to determine the fertile days for those who are attempting to achieve pregnancy. Of course, it could be used for the opposite results as well. Not only was I taught their method, but I was constantly monitored with regular pregnancy checks. The whole process was awkward and entailed taking my temperature every morning and marking the calendar, etc. It was demanding and ultimately it had failed twice. I just saw that. So, anyway. Uh, passed away at age 74. Uh, I've got some things I want to try. Of course, I was changing subjects. Got some things I wanted to try, but it was based on editing things together. And i got to figure out what the problem is with uh, the editor that I ha have, uh, that I was using, that I've been using for videos is Monvovia... Uh, video Suite 18. I think I pay Adobe. I never use it. I think I pay them X amount of money each month to use their video editor. I've purchased some other video editors that I haven't even installed. And I think because they just keep hitting me. You don't have to, but hitting me for uh, upgrades. You know, every every time I turn around. It's uh, a new new upgrade for thirty or forty or fifty bucks or whatever. I get tired of that, and then too, when I run in constantly with whichever one of the editors that is, and there's a couple of them like that that I purchased. It's like uh, I reformat my computer, and then they say, "Oh, you've installed this on a different computer," 
and you can't install it on two different computers and I have to contact them and some of like some of the things I paid for they say sorry and I said you know hey I didn't put it on a different computer I just had to reform it I'm sorry you know so I'm really so so I haven't had much luck I've had bad luck doing the live uploads for the last week or so you know, live streaming. Now I'm having a problem with it. I'm just, I mentioned this the other day, I'm just so tired of things should work. You know, looking at this here, if I zoom in a little bit, which I can do, let's see if I can do it. Um, no, let's see if I can do it this way. No. Nope. With this wall behind me, if I zoomed in a little bit, I could have a green screen behind me. Actually, wouldn't that be green? I could uh, pull that up and uh, might be interesting to play with. So, I've got that one plug-in behind me, and it runs because I moved my everything over. So it runs down into a UPS unit, and then I have things plugged into it. Not very many, and then I have an extension plugged into you know it running around. By the way, I don't know if I let's see where. Okay. This is a Logitech. Uh, I think it's just a C920. Oh, sorry. And it's, uh, you know, USB. Um, but I'm using, this is the 930E Logitech. Looks exactly like this. Um, I wish they would, I should get something and write on. Because when I, if I end up throwing it in a box, and I don't even know which is which of these. But this looks, you know, identical. But... Um, And I shouldn't have bought it. And I reviewers, you know, even mentioned on, on this is the the Brio or whatever. It's a Logitech, and uh, it's a little bit different looking, so you know which one it, you know, which one it is. But I think when I mentioned when I've mentioned in the past, it takes a Type C. To plug in the back, it comes with a cable that has a Type C, and uh, it plugs into the back, and it was about a hundred and ninety dollars. I think it might be down a little bit, and the reviewers that I saw when I was I always been checking out, you know, YouTube when I decide on a camera and all that type of stuff, and people were saying, people that did YouTube videos and used Logitech USB cameras and everything said way it's way too expensive for in which it is for what it does but it does do 4k still too expensive uh, ouch <laughs> so um, to the cable that came with it when it plugged in to the back was at first I didn't realize it was a type C I just thought it was, you know, a UB, USB, whatever they are. I have a, I could show you that since I've got, well, I couldn't show you, don't, no. Uh, 
those are USB cables. Most all of them are USB cables, and that thing there is filled with USB cables. And uh, uh, luckily, the USB cable that came with it did not fit really good in there. It didn't snap in well. And in the past, a few times when I was making videos, if I tried to do what I just did, move the camera, the thing, I would it would disconnect. Well, you know, I get that ding, bing or bong or whatever that it had, the USB device had disconnected. So I found, finally I got around to finding another cable. But with all those cables over there, this is one of the few that I found was... Uh, you know, regular uh, USB, well, USB 3.0 to a um, Type-C input. And uh, I purchased in, a, in the past, um, I have some of these. Uh, this goes into a Type-C and then gives you a, you know, 3.0 USB. The problem was I didn't have a regular, you know, I didn't have one of these males to go into the computer and then have that. But anyway, I found a, found a cable. Just thought I would pass that along. So, uh, I think that's it. Um, see, do I need to put in? I'll try to remember to put the links below for uh, the movies. And I guess maybe I'll mention, I'll put a link for the uh, USB cameras. They really, Logitech really has, you know, good USB cameras. It helps, though, the light. I've got sort of a regular lamp over there. But then I've got one of the umbrella lights you've probably seen. They're aimed at the ceiling over in the corner. Just one. I have two more stands and umbrella things that I could put up, but they sort of take up some space with their legs coming out on the floor, and I end up stubbing my toe or almost falling over them or something. So this is working out fine. So I guess my project, maybe one of my projects I'm going to check because uh, the program I'm running will do backgrounds. I'd have to, I'd have to zoom in a little bit. I would have to move the chair, pick the color that I wanted or the design that I wanted, make it look like I was in the Oval Office or a library or, yeah, I don't know. And, uh, then we could see how that worked, just to play with it. Anyway, uh, please use my Amazon, especially if you're doing Christmas shopping, use my Amazon link. If you go there, you don't have to buy one of the items that I've got listed. Just go there and then go buy your giant big screen TV or whatever, and I will get a commission, and it won't, doesn't cost you anything. If I get enough commissions, I will buy a, a different lens for this camera, and uh, yeah, if you're a company or whatever, and you're buying screens for your offices, that would be nice. <laughs> wonder what they would do if you, if some, like I worked at hospitals where it'd be 350 bed hospital. There are companies that take care of, you know, accounts like that. that you, and uh, the company would come to replace all of the TV sets in the hospital. So it'd be 350 patients rooms 
and I think they may replace ones in the waiting rooms too and stuff like that. But let's say they would come out and they would it'd take them a few days to replace 350 TV sets. And uh, I think once or twice I can remember the uh, the guys saying, well, we only lost, uh, we only had 20 TVs stolen this time. That's why they were, you know, when they were unloading them and carrying them in and setting them down and doing various things, it'd be, and I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we usually lose more than that, you know. When I started working hospital security in 1972, St. Joseph Hospital, when you checked into the hospital, the hospital asked you, uh, do you want a television set in your room? And if you said, yes, I do, then they brought one to your room and you were charged, I forget, 250 a day or something like that for the television, you know, for the television set. So, things changed. That hospital, the nuns ran that hospital. They really owned the hospital. They really ran the hospital and just I'm glad it was I'm glad it was before I came to work there just before I came to work there and I, I don't know I don't think they had a security officer doing it I think the, one of the nuns would have done it uh, during visiting hours uh, a nun I'm sure was at the entrance to the hospital and if a woman showed up with a skirt that was too short or something else she wouldn't be allowed in um, and children were not allowed to go up on the floor under any sort. Well, on Mother's Day or maybe Christmas Day or something like that, the kids could go up, you know, for a little bit to the room, and that was it. They were not allowed to go above, which is actually, I think, a fantastic idea because I, I said later on in life when I was working at other hospitals that there should be signs when you drive up to a hospital say you know saying warning danger enter at your own risk but then hospitals at that point kids crawling around on the you know up in the intensive care unit some patient that has a sign up you know infection or wound care or whatever you have kids crawling around on the floors and doing everything everything else but uh how did I get on this subject? And I had a message that I was heading to. Oh, too, I was going to mention the, uh, oh, well, the fact that kids, yeah. And two, the St. Joe Hospital, the first one I worked at, which was in, well, it was in a bad neighborhood. I know it was a bad neighborhood because I used to live in that neighborhood. Um. Uh, uh, I went to, I was living in that neighborhood when I went to high school. I was living in all-black neighborhood. 1959 is when I graduated from high school. I walked home a few times from high school. And I went to a military, Catholic military high school. So I'd be in a uniform. And on Friday, I'd be in a full dress uniform. And I walked through the neighborhood, and I got stopped a couple times by a group of kids my age or whatever and I remember one time I got stopped and I'm walking home by myself through the neighborhood now I usually took the bus public transportation but I walked home a few times I walked home and I don't know five six seven uh, can't say boys can I that would be uh, they came you know they came over and uh, I always had money in my, my parents, you know, I always had money to buy candy bars and get drinks, you know, I'd always, uh, and I mentioned that before that uh, my parents just gave me, you know, we weren't, they weren't wealthy at all. My dad had a good job, a union job, a boilermaker, but I always had money to buy Cokes and uh, candy, but anyway, so I was walking home. And I see five, six, seven young men coming over to me. And I thought, uh, this is not going to be good. And uh, 
they came over and they said, uh, do you have any money? And I said, no, I don't have any money. <laughs> and like an idiot, I patted my pocket and it was like jingle, jingle, jingle. I thought, oh no. And then the one or two young men said, you do, you have money in your pocket or whatever. And then I don't know where it came from. I guess when you're in danger <laughs> or a warning thing goes off or something, you know. Um, I said, oh, I need that money. Uh, my mother wants me to pick up the uh, cleaning, and uh, which we never took cleaning. Uh, I, you know, I never picked up cleaning or laundry or anything. Uh, and uh, one of the young men or two said, oh, he, he has to pick up the cleaning for his mother. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. He has to get his, and maybe he, I don't think he said auntie, you know, but whatever, maybe he said mama or whatever, but, you know, leave him alone. He has to get so, and then I went on, got stopped another time or, and never had any problem. And then the 60s came, civil rights or whatever. I would have been, uh, I think if I'd have got stopped walking through that neighborhood, same neighborhood, you know, walking through that neighborhood, I don't think I would have survived. Because I worked at uh, St. Joe Hospital starting in 1972, and it was in that neighborhood, my neighborhood. Although, uh, okay, I, yeah. My parents had moved, and then I had gotten married. Yeah, so I didn't live in that neighborhood anymore, but I knew the neighborhood. Um, but the neighborhood was so bad, there was 10 security officers there. Not at a time. There should have been a, on each shift, you know, there wasn't. Two or three at the most on a shift. Daytime, three. Other shifts, two. And in the three years that I was there, we had two security officers shot. Dan was shot. Then about a year later, John Gallegos was shot. John Gallegos was killed. He managed to shoot the guy that shot him. Um, so things Oh, that was going to say to it. St. Joe Hospital also, when the nuns were running the hospital, uh, visiting hours were over, I think, at 8.30. And everybody had to leave. Every, you know, all the, well, not, not the doctors and the staff, but if you were a visitor, you had to leave. Now, if you had somebody who was going to die within a few hours, they'd let you, the nuns would let you stay. Or if you just had a, if your wife just had a baby or something, they would let you stay for a reasonable amount of time. But everybody had to leave. So keep in mind, this is a bad neighborhood. And uh, security, you know, I had to go room to room and get everybody to leave. And so I would have one, it'd be kind of rare to go through and everybody would agree to leave, you know, and go. There'd always be one person or two, you know, someplace that would say, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to leave, you know, you, you know, whatever. And uh, I'd just say, well, I'm going to be back in a little bit. I hope that you, you know, I hope you've left. If you don't leave, I'm going to have to put you out or have you arrested for trespassing? And then usually, by the, when I would come back, they would just have gone, you know, they'd put on their show, and then they'd go, use, they'd leave. But then it got, at other hospitals that I worked at later on, it got where uh, people could just stay after hours. Uh, it just sort of, you know. Anyway, I need to do, I need to tell you about 
I think I already told you about John Gallegas being shot and Dan Stegall being shot. I, I told you, but I know the confrontation with the hospital administrator to make the hospital purchase bulletproof vest and put a gate up. Uh, at the next hospital I worked at, Trinity Lutheran Hospital, I had four times that I did grievances against the director of security. I think I sort of told you about one or two, but I haven't told you about all of them. I haven't told you about about uh, Bob Ross, director of security. He's passed away. I actually liked him, and he actually liked me, but I I wrote him up four times, and I won all four of the grievances, and and he was he was something else. Like I said, I liked him, and I I mentioned one time that it's because when he gave me my merit reviews, <laughs> he wrote such fantastic things about me, which were true. Uh, but that was one thing that made me, <laughs> made me like him. Uh, but, yeah, there was stuff going on. And then the next hospital that I worked at, the director of security there, Unbelievably bad. Unbelievable. Although, I worked there, I hired in, worked there five years, and then a new director of security was hired in. And all the security officers, I think, all of them, I think, thought that I didn't like the new director of security. Oh, he was fantastic. He did the things that I, things that I knew needed to be done and improve things tremendously or whatever. The other security officers, I think most of all of them, thought that, that that was because I told him when he he came in without, he came in from just being a police sergeant on a small town police department. I mean, he had a degree and everything, and he was smart. But he came in and he uh, he made mistakes, and he, well, his mistake was he was one of those people who he was smart, he knew he was smart, and therefore, he thought he was smarter than everybody else. And then he really did not listen to anybody else. And he should have been listening to me. And uh, so there was people who thought that I didn't like him. I did like him. And I thought he was a fantastic director of security. And he did things to improve the department right off of the, right off of the, you know, right from the start. Um the guys, I can remember, maybe not. I can remember somebody saying, in the start of the beginning, oh, you know, and I and I said, uh, I was a security officer when he came here, and when he leaves, I'll be a security officer. You know, and if and a few years later, he moved on to something bigger and better, and that security officer that I had said that to, he came around. I was in one of the patrol cars. He came around and said, Jim, I need to meet you. He came around and he said, oh, I uh, can't remember the guy's name. Anyway, he says, oh, so-and-so is quitting. And he says, oh. So he says, I guess you'll be happy. And I said, no, he was he was a, an excellent, you know. Now, he wrote me, that director of security wrote me up. That's the only, well, he wrote me up a couple times. And both times he was wrong. I was innocent. It was the exact opposite of what I got written up for, and uh, but I had <laughs> I had done some things that I didn't get caught for, things that I that that I could have been fired for, but things that I did them and I would have done them again. You know, well I wouldn't have done them again, but yeah I would have. Uh, you know, I did the right, th I did the human normal thing. And, uh, but 
in their eyes. And so, but I got written up for other things, a couple of things I didn't do, suspended for three days without pay and whatever. And I was totally innocent, uh, actually doing the exact opposite of what I'd been reported for doing. And I thought, well, yeah, I got away with standing in the middle of a waiting room and I told you about that a small waiting room. Well, the size of this little room here, I stood in the middle and there was, I don't know, 10 people in it. It was, every seat was taken. I stood in the middle and said, you know, all of you, God damn it to hell, you stay in this goddamn waiting room. You do not fucking leave this goddamn waiting room. If you leave the waiting room, I'm going to throw your ass out on the highway. Stay in the goddamn waiting room. And these two people, I thought they were all together. It was 3 a.m. in the morning. I didn't know we had another patient. You know, I, th I thought we only had one patient in the ER. But we had, uh, they brought a little girl in, and they had her girl back. And they followed the, I took the people that were, I told this story before. I took those people who kept going to the waiting, kept going into the ER. And I kept telling them, go to the waiting room. Finally, I took them from the waiting room. It was the ER waiting room. I took them down to the surgery waiting room. This is 3 a.m. in the morning. Surgery is closed. The waiting room is tiny. And this other couple, I guess, followed in. And uh, so they were in there. So anyway, I did this 360, you know, stay. And, you know, and that couple said, uh, sir, we're not with these people. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. This does not apply to you. It applies to these other sons of bitches. I want them to stay in the goddamn waiting room and not leave the damn waiting room. And anyway, then I did my rounds or whatever, went back to ER, and a nurse, a new nurse actually, said, oh, Jim, I think you're in trouble. She said, these people here. And I said, yeah, where are they? Oh, that, well, their daughter came in. She's we put her in the GI room or the, wasn't the GI room. It was around the corner where it wouldn't normally... And uh, I said, I didn't know we had another patient here. And I said, yeah, they told me. And I, and she says, oh, they're, they're going to report you or whatever. And I said, well, I said, if they, uh, if they report me, I'll, I'll probably be fired. And there's not much I can do about it, you know, about it and whatever. And then the uh, nurse comes back a little bit and says, uh, these people. Their daughter had her appendix out or tonsils out, I forget which, at some hospital a few months ago. They don't know the name of the hospital. They don't know who their doctor is, you know, whatever. So then the doctor comes over, Jim, these people, uh, they don't know that, you know, their daughter's having some kind of a problem. It must have been appendicitis and she was having some lower problems. Um, and, uh, Dr. Oldie, and he said, they don't know, um, you know, the doctor's name or, or hospital or anything, but I forget he had some, he knew something or he, he said something and I said, uh, oh, okay, that sounds like St. Joe Hospital and Dr. Sperney and, uh, so he went back, and then he came back. That's it. Dr. Sperney said, no, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim, and whatever. So then I was thinking, okay, if they report me, I'm just going to, I'm going to say, well, these people didn't even know the name of, you know, and I'm not going to say, I, I wasn't going to lie, you know, but I was going to say, and I, but anyway, they didn't, re the people didn't report me. And, uh, so there was a couple of things like, and so anyway, I thought, okay, I got written up. When I got written up and whatever, um, I thought, well, I was guilty a couple of times. Yeah. Even Stephen. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to upload this. I should upload okay. <laughs> a little tired of uploading things and not having to up upload. There again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please, I think I mentioned that in a video, and I'm not sure you guys saw that. So if you're a YouTube producer, let me mention this. There was a notice that here in a few days, 
I think two or three days, automatically YouTube is going to go through and run a thing that is going to remove subscribers who are remove subscribers who have subscribed to your YouTube channel and they no longer they no longer they've deleted their YouTube account. And uh, also there it will automatically remove I like I mentioned, I think I I'm not sure if you saw that video or not. They're also going to remove videos, which will be hard to do and figure out where somebody says. But I think people, a lot of, some of those people do it on a massive scale. I'll subscribe to your channel if you subscribe to my channel. That's not allowed. I've never done that. Um, then the other thing it's going to remove, and I'm sure they'll have, they won't get everybody, but there's places you can go and pay money to get fake subscribers to move your numbers up. And I'm sure they'll catch a bunch of those and remove, you know, remove those. I think I might lose, you know, I'm guessing five or 10 people because somebody uh, has subscribed here and then they either had their channel deleted or they deleted their channel for some reason. So not gonna affect me. But if you're a YouTube subscriber and here in a few days, all of a sudden you notice the number of your subscribers has dropped. That's the reason. Uh, I think they said too that when that when that happens, they'll be notifying. So I think maybe you'll get a, uh, a notice from YouTube to the YouTube's, you know, to you saying, maybe they'll say X, they may just say some, or maybe they'll give you a number. It'd be nice if they gave you a number. Anyway, just thought I'd mention that. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. Make up for that 10 or 15 people I may lose. Okie doke. Stop a recording.